Yeah. Hey Ryan, I uh, hope you start feeling better. Uh, I will just go through a couple problems here. The f actually, the first one was this one, which is a linear combination of cosine and sine. And now if we want to turn this into just a single co cosine, it's going to have a different amplitude and a different phase displacement. So the first thing we do is draw it on an xy plane. We move to the left 3 because that's dealing with cosine. Cosine moves it horizontally. We move it up 2 because sine deals with vertical motion. So now if that's negative 3 and 2, our new amplitude is going to be this uh, value right here, the hypotenuse. So if I take 2 squared plus 3 squared equals c squared, that's going to be 4 plus 9, or 13. And so the square root of 13 is going to be that hypotenuse, which is going to be our new amplitude for cosine. Now we're going to take x minus this value right here is going to be our new phase displacement. So our phase displacement, um, if I if I take the inverse tan, or maybe I should say, if I take the tangent of my angle x, that's going to be two over negative three. That's a terrible negative three. Hopefully you can deal with it. Um, so now what we do is we take the arctan of negative two thirds. The arctan of negative two thirds is the inverse tangent of negative two thirds plus pi n. So you go to your calculator, make sure your calculator is in radian mode, and take the inverse tangent of negative 2 over 3. And that answer is negative 0.588. Negative 0.588. Now negative 0.588, radians is a little tough to conceptualize, but negative 0.588 is actually right here. Now, to get it over in this quadrant, what we're going to have to do is add pi to it. So negative 0.588 plus pi will give us 2.554. All right, 2.554. Keep in mind that that is, to give you a perspective on what that value is, 3.14 is pi, which is over here. Half of pi is 1.57. So it does make sense that this would be about 2.554. So that's what we're going to have to subtract from this to convert this linear combination of sine and cosine into just one cosine. All right, now we have to just solve it using what we did from last chapter. So I'd first divide by root 13. So that's negative 1 over root 13. And then I take the arc cosine of both sides. Which is plus or minus the inverse cosine. Plus 2 pi n. Now uh, the inverse cosine. Again, keeping your calculator in radian mode is negative 1 over root 13. So I have 1.8518 or 2. Now I'll add 2.554 to both sides. So add 2.554 to the positive. And I have 4.4. So 4.4 plus 2 pi n, and then negative 1.8 plus 2.554 is 0.754 plus 2 pi n. So those are my two general equations. All right, for my next one, uh, what we have to do is look at this left-hand side and 2 cosine squared minus 1. If you look at our identities, there's a formula that says cosine of 2a is equal to 2 cosine squared a minus 1. 
oops, I ran out of room here. So this whole thing is the same thing as cosine of 2a. So now what you do is take the arc cosine of both sides. And the arc cosine is positive and negative inverse cosine plus, uh, now it's degrees, so it's 360n. Now I'd take the inverse cosine of 3 fourths, which is 41.4. So I have positive and negative 41.4 plus 360n. Now I divide, divide each side by 2. So positive and negative 20.7 plus 360n. I don't know why I turned this to a's, because these should all be thetas. But once I have my thetas, now that would be the general equation. All right, well, hopefully this helps you out.